This video will attempt to show you how to remotely manage a switch through Telnet and then also secure that remote management through SSH and a few other mechanisms. What I have up here is a 2960 switch connected to a PC through the Fast Ethernet 01 on the switch to the Fast Ethernet 00 of the PC. We also have a console cable connected from the PC to the switch so that you can configure it. I'm going to go into the switch here and go into the command line interface. This switch is fresh and clean with no configurations on it. The first thing I'm going to do is to get into global configuration and I'm going to set my passwords. Without passwords set we cannot tell that into a switch. So I'm going to do my enable secret as class and then I need my line BTY, and I'm just going to do 0 through 4 so I can have 5 Telnet connections to this. Spelled that wrong there. Line VTY04. Set the password of this to Cisco. I want that password when I log in. The next thing I need to do to remotely manage the switch is to configure a switch virtual interface. And I'll use interface VLAN 1 for this. It's the default VLAN. This is what is currently configured and set up on the switch. So if I do interface VLAN 1, I will give this an IP address, and I'll just use 192.168.11 with the 22.55.0 for the subnet mask, and I will turn it on with the no shutdown command. If I do a show VLAN here, I can see that I have VLAN 1, and all ports are associated with VLAN 1. The next thing I will do is I'll configure my PC to be put onto that same network. I'll use the address of 192.168.1.2.2255.0 here. I will uh, go to my command prompt and I will test connectivity by pinging the switch's address. 192.168.11, I can ping successfully to that interface VLAN 1. Now if I wanted to remotely manage it, what I would do is I would type in telnet 192.168.1.1. You can see that it tries to find the IP address of 192.168.1.1 and it finds it. It opens up the connection and is now asking for my line VTY04 password I set up, which I set to Cisco. Now when I type enable, I set my password for that to be class, and now I'm on the switch. I can uh, view all the configurations of it if I wanted to. I could make changes to this if I wanted to as well. So I could get into config T and for example, I could change the host name to S1 if I wanted to. So now I'm remotely managing that switch. The problem with using Telnet though is that everything is sent over plain text and if someone was sniffing the traffic between the PC and that switch they could follow that TCP flow and they could view everything being sent and received um, in plain text on their computer. So what we want to do instead is we want to start to use SSH to configure and remotely manage our switches. So in order to do that what I want to do is I want to get into just global configuration. I need to type the command IP domain name to set a domain name on this switch. And I'll use the example of cisco.com like the curriculum typically will use. The next command I need to do is I need to generate a, an encryption key. In order to generate a encryption, an encryption key I use the CRPTO, the crypto key generate RSA. I had one set up before here so I'm going to replace it and it's going to ask me how many bits in length I want this modulus to be. Cisco recommends a value of 1024. We can set this longer if we wish but it would just take the router longer to, um, to generate that, that key. The longer the more secure it should be. The next thing I need to do is set up the local database with the username and password. So now to connect through SSH, not only are we going to be prompted for a password, like we were for Telnet, but we're also going to be prompted for a username as well. So I'm going to type username, I'll set the username as admin, the password for that username 
as CCNA. The next thing I need to do is I need to get into my virtual terminal lines and set that I want to use SSH instead of Telnet. So I do a transport input SSH. I also use the command login local. The login local is telling the router that in order to use SSH, I want to use the local database for usernames and passwords, which I just currently set up here. I could also use the login command to set a database uh, for use on a, on a remote server. I will end out of here. The next thing I want to do is I want to separate my user traffic from my management traffic. When I did my show VLAN before, I could see here that everything was set into the VLAN 1. So all of my management traffic and my user or data traffic is sent over the same VLAN. Uh, we don't want that to happen. That's a security risk. It also can be a performance issue as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into my global configuration. I'm going to configure a VLAN for management. So I'm going to use VLAN 99 for that. I'm going to name it management. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to associate uh, the port on the switch that the PC is plugged into, into that VLAN 99. In order to do that, inside of global configuration, I get into the fast Ethernet 01 because that's the port that the PC is plugged into. I'm going to give this the switch port mode access command. The switch port mode access command sets this switch port to an access port. It takes away the ability to dynamically determine whether this port is an access port or a trunking port. And that's best practice to switch all of your ports to access ports that PCs and devices can potentially be plugged into. The next thing I want to do on this switch port is I want to make it part of VLAN 99, which is my management VLAN, so that I can remotely manage this switch through that interface. So I'm going to do a switch port access VLAN 99. I now need to configure interface VLAN 99 with an IP address so that I can remotely manage this. So I get into my interface VLAN 99. I will do an IP address 192.168. I'll use 17 in this scenario here for SSH. Notice I get the message 192.168.10 overlaps with VLAN 1. Typically every VLAN is going to be its own in its own subnet or its own network. So what I need to do uh, because of my prior configuration is get into my interface VLAN 1 and do a no IP address. So it gets rid of that address. Going back into my interface VLAN 99, I should now be able to set that IP address. I'll turn it on with the no shutdown. And now I should be able to remotely manage this switch through SSH securely. So let's test this out. What I need to do to log in through SSH uh, in Packet Tracer is on the command prompt I issue the SSH-L for login and then the username I want to log in with, which we set for admin. And then the IP address of the switch, which we set to 192.168.1.17. Ask me for the admin's password, which we set to CCNA. And now you can see I'm on that switch. And I could view my configurations. And I could make changes to this switch as well. Now on a Windows machine, such as Windows 7, I'd want to use some type of SSH client like PuTTY to create my SSS um, client connection, and I could remotely manage the switch through that PuTTY application. So hopefully after watching this video, you have an idea of how to set up Telnet and how to set up SSH on a switch. That is all for this video. Thanks for watching.